Well, it was fight night in America. Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, locked in a steel cage for, what was it, 90 minutes? I don't know exactly how long it was because I kept pausing um, in disbelief. I had to process what was going on in front of me um, to keep my head from exploding. I couldn't just take it all in at once because it was just a rapid-fire succession of um, insanity, gaslighting, and missed opportunities. Now, I guess I'll, I'll start off with <clears throat> general 10,000-foot overview. I think that uh, Trump, he was there running out the clock. I think that he wasted his time. I think that he could have gotten a lot accomplished. I think he could have gotten a lot of good sound bites. Or he got some, but he could have had a lot more. Um, and... Unfortunately, I just don't think he really wanted to be there. I don't think he cared. Uh, I, I think that his he probably just feels, you know, hey, I'm ahead in the polls. Uh, I, I don't care about this. I don't need to be – I don't need to come out swinging. And so let's just get this over with. And, and I think his posture said all that as well. He was hunched over for the entire line. He rarely stood up straight. Uh, I don't know if he was just hunching himself over to try and um, – eliminate some of the height disparity between him and Kamala Harris, which from what I understand is about 12 inches. So pretty, pretty remarkable. You know, I mean, they had to scale down the podium for her and I, and I'm, I'm sure she's standing on a stool to try and look as close to him size wise as possible. But Trump was going the extra mile to try and help her out. And, and, and when he's hunched over like that and, and squinting his eyes and being grumpy, he just kind of looks like a troll and not a fun troll, not a 4chan troll, not a Kiwi farms troll. Not even a Twitter troll. He just kind of looked like a troll under a bridge. And if that's the case, if that's the attitude he's bringing, it's like, why show up at all? You know, don't just if he's going to be like that, as far as I'm concerned, don't do another debate. If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. Now, if, if I were in Trump's shoes, I would look at these debates as, a, as an opportunity. Like, this is, this is free publicity. You're running a presidential campaign. Use the debate as a platform to campaign like pfft. you've got your opponent right there but clown her hassle her knock her off balance uh trump chose not to do that and harris is the kind of person who is not do well under pressure we saw that with tulsi gabbard she only had to prod Kamala a little bit, and the whole facade broke down. But Trump never challenged that. He just wasn't aggressive enough. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, he was reactionary the entire time. He was just up there reacting to whatever the moderators or Kamala Harris would say. And there's not – as I think as everyone has pointed out at this point, there is no real line between Kamala Harris and the moderators. Uh, this is the most uh, – this – the most biased moderators I've ever seen. On a TV debate, worse than Candy Crowley. I remember Candy Crowley back in 2012. It's hard to believe it's been four, no, not 14, 12 years. Um, but uh, Candy Crowley was not this bad, and there was only one of Candy Crowley. <laughs> there were two of these moderators, and Candy Crowley. Um, there was an audience there too, so they weren't alone in a room. This was just uh, these four people alone in a room. It was three individuals just ganging up on Trump, and Trump was just there reacting. He was playing defense. He was. <laughs> trying to tell everyone how big his crowd sizes were. Why? Uh, because Kamala Harris said that he doesn't have very big crowds at his rallies. Like, obvious bait. You know, Trump, you should be the one baiting her. Because that is how you break her facade. Um, what Kamala Harris's goal last night was, in my opinion, this is what would have been my goal if I were in her campaign, is, hey, a lot of the country doesn't know you exist because, you know, you never ran in a primary. You've never been elected dog catcher. You've just been installed as the Democratic nominee. So you need to go out there and you need to look like a serious person. You need to look like you're concerned about the country. Um, and uh, you want people to take you seriously. And if you've never heard of Kamala Harris in your life and you don't follow politics – uh, and you don't really know much you know, about issues or facts. You just go up there and you see her competently deliver her lines. You see her 
make her silly little faces while Trump is talking. She looks very indignant. Um, uh, she looks like, oh my gosh, do you believe this guy? He's crazy. And if you know nothing, and to be, you know, let's be clear here. The people who don't know how they're voting are folks who just don't follow this stuff and don't really know what's going on. Those are the kinds of people whose opinions will be affected by a debate like this. It's a pretty small segment of the population, but they do exist, okay? And so if that's the goal, you know, is to affect some of these people, hey, this is a way of getting some votes. And you got to play the game. And I'll give it to her. She did that well. I think if I am, uh, you know, I'm an alien. I crash land on Earth. I watch that debate. And I go, wow, this Harris woman seems like, you know, she's got her head screwed on straight. You know why? Because Trump never knocked her off balance. We never saw the real Kamala come out. You know, those of us who have, who follow politics and have seen her uh, around for many, many years, I think 2010 was probably when I became, no, maybe it was 12 when I became more aware of her, I think. Because I, I, it was when she was running for Senate. So maybe that was 14. Maybe it wasn't that long ago. Um was that? God, when was it? I remember when she was attorney general in California, and I remember when she was running for Senate. Like, I briefly knew who she was, like, before she ran for Senate, because I think people were talking about her running for Senate. Um, and, and she's never been this person who we saw on the stage. She was very calm. She had a different demeanor. She had a different tone. Um, this was just not her. Normally, she is more animated. She's, uh, um, Higher energy, I would say that. Um, she is indignant in a different way, in a way that a lot of people perceive to be nasty. And clearly, she had coaches uh, who were telling her, hey, this is why people don't like you. Here's how you should act if you want people to like you. And they practiced that in the mirror for weeks and weeks and weeks, just so that she could nail that for 90 minutes. And... The only way that you're going to break that facade is by hassling her and uh, making her speak off the cuff. As long as she was able to continue reciting her pre, you know, her pre, her canned answers and her lines and her zingers that she practiced in the mirror, um, there just wasn't going to be any fireworks here. There wasn't going to be any real debate. Uh, and there weren't going to be any viral moments that really did a lot to help Trump. I mean, the best that he had was, I'm talking. You know, he, he, you know, he did a good job. He, he appropriated her line, um, which a lot of people, uh, again, you have to be pretty inside baseball to even know the I'm speaking meme uh, when she shouted down the, um, uh, the pro-Palestine protesters who were mad about, uh, you know, saying that she was enabling genocide in Gaza. And, you know, like a very dark topic these people were talking about. And they were, you know, they were shouting at her and waving signs. And she just stopped and she said, I'm speaking. And the crowd cheered like clapping seals. Um, and so Trump tried to like meme that. And because uh, <clears throat> she was talking over him while his, her microphone was off and he was talking. And he's like, you know, excuse me, I'm talking sound familiar it's like you know you didn't even say her exact line why didn't you at least say i'm speaking you know do it do it in the exact same tone of voice as her just to mock her but anyway there was still a funny moment from trump for the from those of us who are in the know um you know about about politics uh generally speaking though if if you already were leaning one way or the other i think everybody has said this too which is why i'm not focusing on this because you can get this analysis from anybody um, if you are already leaning one direction or another, if you have any idea, like, what is going on in American politics, your opinion is not going to be changed by last night. You know, Trump was being Trump. Um, Kamala was definitely being a faker. But that's nothing that would bother her supporters. If you're a Kamala supporter, uh, you should be very happy with her performance last night. Um, you know, she didn't implode like a lot of people thought she would. And I think it's because she probably practiced really hard. I'll give her credit for that. Now, this has nothing to do with actually being president. This is entirely about pr practicing for a performance on a stage. Like, it's funny that this is how, you know, this is how we're talking about it. But that, that is in reality what you're doing when, you, when you're getting on one of these debates. You're just, you're putting on a show. And she practiced really hard. And she was able to um, f uh, play her role without flubbing uh, any of her lines. Trump, on the other hand, you know, he was himself. He went up there. Um, 
he didn't, you know, I think there was something catastrophic for him. Uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate all, you know, I, I appreciate a lot of the stuff they said. Like, he brought up Kamala at the Munich Security Conference and how that provoked the Ukraine war. Like, I was screaming at my TV, like, oh my God, the friggin' Munich Security Conference. Nobody ever talks about it. It's her fault. And then Trump brought it up. So I was happy to see that. But, like, me and five other people <laughs> even get that reference and, and knew what he was talking about. You know, like with the cat memes. I'm glad that he brought up the cat memes. Um, Donald Trump loves cats, all this stuff. You know, uh, uh, they're eating the cats in Springfield, Ohio. I think these are good things to bring up. I, I do. Um, you should be pandering to your base because they are the backbone of your political organization. Those are who you should be most concerned with pleasing. Um, but in, again, in this kind of a format, uh, I, I think that the real utility is not making it all about Trump necessarily. It's about, like, this is a, a rare opportunity that you have to heckle your opponent, Kamala Harris, and screw with her. And instead, she and the moderators were the ones heckling Trump, and he was often having to... Now, sometimes he'll stop himself, but a lot of the time he was just responding and defending himself and talking... You know. He, and I have to say, if I were in his position, I, you know, I probably would have felt the same way. If everybody's ganging up on me, I would have gotten defensive. I mean, because so much of it was just, it was infuriating. But unfortunately, we have to ex expect this of the media. And if you're going to agree to go on a stupid media fake debate, um, <clears throat> those are the, you know those are the rules of the game. They're going to gang up on you, and, and you just have to fight back in your own way. But I mean, like when they shushed him for bringing up uh, that he was just uh, that he was the target of a political assassination and saying how, uh, you know, the rhetoric from the Democrats, you know, calling him Hitler all the time, how that has consequences. And some people in the audience who are watching right now might take that seriously and shoot at him and his supporters again. Like Trump has supporters who are dead because a bullet that was meant for him uh, hit them instead. Uh, you know, the guy who got hit in the face, the firefighter. And not only was that not addressed by the moderators in the form of any question, like they asked nothing about political violence or assassinations. Um, when Trump brought it up himself, uh, they shushed him and said, we need to move on. Like, that's, it's disgusting. And then when they asked him about January 6th, they said, do you have any regrets about what you did on January 6th? And he said, and he said well, actually, now that you mention it, you know, I was really concerned about there being, uh, you know, unrest on January 6th. And so, you know, I wanted to, I offered uh, the National Guard and the military to uh, uh, the D.C., uh, mayor and to uh, Speaker of the House Pelosi, and uh, wouldn't you know, Nancy Pelosi's on the record turning me down because uh, she didn't want there to be more security on January 6th. And he's like, oh, this, like, the question was about you, not about Pelosi. It's like just be nasty. And so, yes, the moderators were terrible. David Muir is a disgrace. Um, I would be embarrassed if I were him to get out of bed in the morning. But David Muir is not on the ballot, and... Um, nobody will remember his name 60 days from now uh, when we're voting. Or gosh, it's less than that now. What is it, like 50 days? So anyway, that about sums everything up. I, I don't think that it was uh, super consequential, the debate. Um, but again, I do, I do feel that Trump missed opportunities, missed a lot of opportunities to um, really knock Harris down. Because, uh, you know, she was able to just get through all her platitudes and, you know, and, and deliver her lines unabated. So anyway, with that said, I'll see you folks back here in the next one.